Hi, this is George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And in this video, uh, we'll be reviewing for an elementary algebra final and we'll be focusing on chapter three, which involves graphing lines and working with their equations. This is the second in a series of six videos for this purpose. First problem we'll take a look at, finding the x and y intercepts of an equation. To find the x intercept, you substitute zero for y and solve. Uh, do the opposite to find the y-intercept, substitute 0 for x. So let's go ahead and take a look at the x-intercept. Uh, we'll begin by putting in 0 for y. When we do that, uh, five, 4 times 0 is 0. So the y term essentially falls out, and we're left with 5x equals 20. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 4. Uh, so the x-intercept is the ordered pair 4 comma 0, x first, y second. Uh, to find the y-intercept, if I substitute 0 for x, this term will go to 0, leaving me with the equation 4y equals 20. Go ahead and divide both sides by 4, and we find that y is equal to 5. So the y-intercept here is 0 comma 5. Moving on, now we'll learn how to graph an equation using its intercepts. When an equation's in standard form, like we have here, where x and y are together on one side, the most efficient way to graph the line is by using its intercepts. The x-intercept we find by solving the equation 3x equals negative 24, divide by 3, and we find that x is negative 8. So we're going to have a point at negative 8, 0. Uh, to find the y-intercept, put in 0 for x, get the equation 4y equals negative 24, Divide both sides by 4, and we find that y is negative 6. So there's a y-intercept at 0, negative 6. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. I'm going to put a point at the x-intercept. Negative 8. Put another one on the y-intercept, negative 6. And we're going to draw the line that goes through those two points. I'm still learning how to use this tablet, so understand that the line may not be perfectly straight, uh, you should be using a ruler. There is the line. Uh, now we'll move on to graphing an equation of the form y equals mx plus b. This equation already has y isolated and in that case we know that our slope is the coefficient of the x term, so it's negative one-third. That means that this line moves down one, three to the right b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, so this graph has a y-intercept of 0, 2. To graph it, we'll begin by putting a point at the 2 on the y-axis, and then the slope is negative 1 third, so down 1, 3 to the right, down 1, 3 to the right. We could keep doing that uh, as far as we wish. Draw the line that goes through those points again. Uh, forgive the uh, lack of a ruler here, but start at 2, down 1, 3 to the right. To find the slope of a line passing through two points, we're going to use the slope formula uh, shown on the screen. It's a good idea to label your points, uh, your values. Here's the first x, x1, the first y-coordinate, y1, the second x-coordinate, and the second y-coordinate. So we can substitute into this formula. Uh, y2 minus y1 is going to be 5 minus negative 4. Then we move on to the denominator, x2 minus x1. That's going to be negative 1 minus 5. Okay? To simplify, whenever we see this situation, subtracting a negative, it's the same as addition. So the numerator is 5 plus 4, or 9. The denominator, negative 1 minus 5, is negative 6. And we reduce this to be negative 3 halves. To determine if two lines are parallel or perpendicular, we have to know the slopes of these lines. Uh, 9x plus 3y equals 15. To find the slope, I need to isolate this equation, uh, solve this equation for y isolate y on one side. Uh, first thing we're going to do is move the 9x by subtracting it, subtracting 9x from both sides. Uh, next I need to get rid of that 
3, and since it's 3 times y, I can divide straight through by 3, shown there, and simplify. I get y equals negative 3x plus 5. That tells me that the slope of this line is negative 3. Now, before we look at the other line, two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. They're perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals. Uh, and by the way, this I mean non-vertical lines. Uh, the slope here is negative 3. A parallel line would have a slope of negative 3 as well. A perpendicular slope, a line would have a slope of positive one-third. Change the sign, take the reciprocal. All right, let's see how it works here. First, we're going to get rid of the 4x, subtract that. Uh, next, we want to divide by the coefficient of y, which is negative 12, and simplify each fraction. We get y equals 1 3rd x minus 2 thirds. The 2 thirds doesn't matter. Uh, we only really worry about the slope. Here it's a positive 1 third. So uh, these two slopes are negative reciprocals and the lines are perpendicular. Okay, uh, next problem, finding the equation of a line whose slope is given and passes through a certain point. There are two ways this could be done depending on who your instructor is. I'm going to show you first using y equals mx plus b. Then I'm going to also show you using point slope form of a line. Here I'm giving a, given a value for the slope m. 1 is a value of x. Negative 6 is a value for y. And I can plug those three values in here. Negative 6 for y, negative 2 for m, and 1 for x. Uh, multiply negative 2 times 1. To solve for b, I'm going to go ahead and just add 2 to both sides. And that gets me to negative 4 equals b. The goal is to substitute the value of m and the value of b back into this form of the equation. y equals negative 2x minus 4 is the equation that meets these conditions. Now, as I mentioned, there is a second way using what's called the point-slope formula. We need to know the slope and a point on the line, x1, y1. So let me relabel these as x1 and y1. I'm going to substitute negative 2 for the slope, positive 1 for x1, and negative 6 for y1, like so. Again, subtracting a negative, the same thing as addition. I also will have to distribute the negative 2 into the parentheses here and to uh, isolate y, oops, a little premonition there, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, and I end up with y equals negative 2x minus 4 again. Okay. On to the last problem for this video, learning how to graph a linear inequality. Again, anytime we see a less than or greater than sign, we know it's an inequality. We're going to begin by graphing the line negative 3x plus 2y equals negative 6. And we're going to graph it with a solid line because equal to is included in the solutions here. If this line were not present under the less than sign, we'd use a dashed line. Uh, the x-intercept we can find by solving negative 3x equals negative 6, divide by negative 3, we get x equals 2. So there's an x-intercept at 2, 0. For the y-intercept, 2y equals negative 6, divide by 2, and we get y equals negative 3. So there's a y-intercept at negative 3. Let's go ahead and put those on the graph again. 2 for x, negative 3 for y, and we're going to just go ahead and draw a solid line through those points. Now we pick a test point that's not on the line. If you can, the origin is always a great one to pick. And we're going to substitute that back into the original inequality to determine determine if it's a solution or not. So again, my test point is 0, 0. So I'll substitute that in. Uh, the reason we pick 0, 0 is it's easiest to work with that mathematically because the left side, that is a 0, uh, just drops out to be 0. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 6? No, nope, that's a false statement. So that means that this point is not a solution. 
that means that all the points on the other side of the line are solutions and so we shade the bottom right portion of the graph. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave a comment on this video or you can reach me through the contact page on my website, georgewoodbury.com. Also, let me know if you'd like a copy of this final review and or the complete answer key. Thanks and good luck.